how to add keyframes to any blueprint variables in the level sequence with C++ in Unreal. And actually, that's probably going to be the last video in which we're going to add keyframes in the level sequence, at least for a little bit, because it's getting a little bit repetitive and there's a lot of different type of keyframes you can add in the level sequence, but in the end, they are all pretty similar. So I think you got it by now. So today, we're just going to take a quick look at how to add keyframes to all the different types of blueprint variables. And then in the next few videos, we're going to do something else. So let's get to it. But before we start, today's video is going to reuse some code we wrote in the video 22 of the series. So I obviously recommend to go see it, but if you don't want to, here is the code. So as usual, empty other file, except the function we're going to code today. And also we have a little forward declaration right here at the top. So the function is add BP variable keyframe. So we're just going to add a keyframe to a few variables we created in Blueprint. To be able to do that, we're going to need the level sequence in which we want to add the keyframe, obviously, and also the Blueprint actor that has all the little variables. We also need the frame where we want to add the keyframes. And obviously, we will also need to provide all the different variable names and values that we want to apply to those keyframes. But in my case, since I just want to give you a few examples, we're just going to add some random values to hard coded variable names that are already created in my Blueprint. So it's really just to show you examples on how to add keyframes to different Blueprint variables. But in your case, obviously, if you want to add keyframes to specific variables using that function, you're going to have to also provide the name of the variable and also the value you want to assign to that variable. But in our case, we're going to keep it simple. So that's it for the header file. And now it's time to jump in the CPP. And here we're going to start with the includes as usual. So first includes is going to be the code of the video 22 that we're going to use to find our actor that is inside the level sequence. Then we also need the basic includes that we need when we are working with the level sequence. So the level sequence, movie scene, and movie scene section. And then we need three extra includes for each type of variable you want to add keyframes to. So for example, in our case today, we're going to add keyframes to a bool variable. So we're going to need the movie scene bool track, movie scene bool section, and movie scene bool channel includes. And same thing for all the other types of variable. And since we're also going to add keyframes to a float variable, we're also going to need the movie scene float track, movie scene float section, and movie scene float channel to be able to do that. And one more time, we're also going to add keyframes frames to an enum variable. So we're going to need the movie scene byte track, movie scene byte section, and movie scene byte channel to be able to do that. So these are all the three types of variables that we're going to add keyframes onto today. But if let's say you want to add keyframes to a vector, to an int, to color, to any other type of variables, you're going to need to add the includes for the track, section, and channel. That's just how it works. I'm going to add some documentation links in the description in which you'll be able to see all the different variable types that are keyable in the level sequence. So good. But today we're just going to focus on these three variable types. But to be able to do that, well, we're going to need to add the modules inside the build.cs file. So we need the level sequence, movie scene, and movie scene track. So let's go see in the build.cs file that we have the level sequence right here. We have the movie scene and the movie scene tracks. Perfect. We have all the required modules. So that's pretty good. If you don't have them, just add them. Otherwise, it's not going to compile. Perfect. Let's go back in the CVP and we're going to take a look at this little function right here, which is going to be pretty long. And it's also going to start the same way as most of the other functions that we use to add keyframes in the level sequence. So first step is to validate that the level sequence is valid. So is my level sequence equal to null? If so, I'm just going to return because I cannot add a keyframe in an invalid sequence. Then same thing, I'm going to find my actor inside my level sequence. So we'll call the function get actor UID from level sequence that we wrote in video 22 feeding it the actor and the level sequence path that's going to give you the UID of your actor in the level sequence. If that UID is not valid, you can just return right away because you cannot add a keyframe to an actor that is not inside the level sequence, obviously. And you can also add the actor in the level sequence instead. But in my case, I'm just going to return it because I want to focus on the keyframe. So good. My level sequence is valid. My actor is valid. Now we just have to calculate the frame number. So to do that, we need the ticks per frame. So how many ticks there are per frame in the level sequence. To calculate that, we need the tick resolution and the display rate that we can divide together to retrieve the ticks per frame that we can then multiply by the frame number we receive as input to determine the frame number where we want to place the keyframes in the level sequence. And that's it for all the pre-processing that we needed to do. We have all the information we need to be able to add keyframes in the level sequence. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit right here and we're going to start with our first type of keyframe we want to add and it is the bool keyframe. So to do that, we have to first find the track on which we want to add the keyframe. We're going to 
check if the track is already in the level sequence, obviously. So I'm gonna ask my movie scene to find a track. The type of track that I want is the U movie scene bull track. I'm feeding it the UID of my actor and the name of my track. And as output, the function is going to give us the track if it finds it in the level sequence. The name right here that I'm using to identify the track is the same name as my variable in Blueprint. So in my Blueprint, I created a new Boolean variable that I named my BP bool variable name. And that's the name of my variable. And that's why I'm using that name right here to find my track. And that's just how it works. You have to use the name of your variable to retrieve your track. Actually, you have to use the path of the variable. But in our case today, you don't have to think about it because the path of the variable is always the name of the variables, at least for today. So that's going to give you the track if it's already in the level sequence. But if it's not there, well, we're going to create it, obviously. So here I'm just going to ask my movie scene to add a new track. The type of track is obviously going to be the new movie scene bool track because that's the type of track that we want. We want to add a boolean keyframe. So we need a bool track. The function needs to know where to add the keyframe. We want to add it on our actor right here. So that's the UID of my actor. And as output, it's going to give us the track here. Good, we have the track, but that track, that new track, if we created a new track right here, is not assigned to our variable right now. It's just an empty track that is added on top of our actor. So there's a Boolean track on the actor, but it doesn't know what it controls actually, it's just a track. You can add keyframes to it, that's pretty cool, but it's not gonna do anything. So what we're gonna do is link that track to our blueprint variable. So that's my blueprint variable name that I have right here. So I'm gonna do a set property name and path, feeding it the same exact name as my variable in blueprint. So my BP bool variable name for both the name of my property and the path of my property. And that's going to assign it with the variable that is created in blueprint. In this case, and also for all the other variables we're going to use today, both the name and the path are the same. They are simply using the variable name and that's awesome because it simplifies our life a little bit but it happens that sometimes the path of the variable is different from the name and for it to work you'll need to provide the right path for your variable i don't really know how unreal generates the path of the variables but in my case every time i need to find the proper path to use for my property i simply add the breakpoint inside the set property name and path function and then once the breakpoint is there i can simply add the track manually in the editor and that's going to trigger the breakpoint which will let me read the property that Unreal generated for that variable. So what I recommend is simply to use the same name as your variable for both the name of the property and the path of the property. And if it doesn't work, then you can simply add a breakpoint inside that function, add your track in the editor and see what Unreal generates for that variable. But I don't think that's something we're gonna have to do today. It should work with the variable name just like that. So good. Now we finally created the track inside the level sequence and associated it with the variable that is created in your blueprint actor. Now it's time to add a keyframe to it but to be able to do that well we need a section so we're gonna call the function find or add the section to either find the section that is already on the track or simply create a new section if there's none so find or add section we have to provide the frame number where we want the section to be and then we also need to provide a boolean that is going to let us know if the function created a new section or simply retrieve a section that was already there so the function is going to either find the section or create it for us and return it to us right here and that's good now we have the section we can add the keyframe onto it but first i'm just going to make sure that the range of my section is valid so i'm just going to check if the section was just created so if the find or add section just created a new section then I'm just going to modify the range of that section to make it infinite. So I'm just going to stretch the range of my section all the way to the infinite on both sides. You can set the range that you want, but in my case, I want to keep it simple and I want to make sure that the section is always covering all the keyframes that are in the level sequence. So I'm just going to make it infinite. And that's actually the default behavior in the editor for most of the section when you add them in the level sequence. So good. Now we have the section for real. We have the track section, and now it's time to retrieve the channel from that section as we did before in the previous videos. So so in the section, you can access the channel proxy, which is going to give you access to the function get channel, which is going to look for a channel inside that section. The channel that we want is the F movie scene pool channel. And we only want the first one because, well, there's only one anyway, so it doesn't really matter. You still have to provide the index. So in my case, I'm going to provide the index at zero, even though there's only one channel inside the section. And that's going to give you the channel right here. And it's on that channel we have to add the keyframe. So channel add keys. That function 
function expects to receive two arrays actually so it's expecting to receive an array of frame number and an array of value to assign to those frame numbers but in our case we just want to create one keyframe so that's why right here I'm surrounding it by two brackets which is going to convert that variable to an array and I'm doing the same thing for the value I want to assign to my variable here since I don't really care about the value I'm assigning to my keyframe I just want to see if I'm able to assign a keyframe and if it modifies the blueprint variable so I'm just going to generate a simple random boolean right here that I'm setting inside an array to be able to call the add keys function and that's it that function should add the keyframes for us so now there's a keyframe inside the level sequence we just have to tell the track and the section to refresh themselves so I'm gonna call the modify function on both of those and that should make the keyframe appear in the level sequence good we're done with the first keyframe now we're gonna do the same exact thing but for the float and the enum track so I'm gonna scroll down a little bit right here and for the float well it's gonna be the same thing we're gonna start by trying to find the track that is already inside the level sequence if there's already one so and we're gonna do a simple find track the class of the track is gonna be the new movie scene float track the UID of the actor is gonna be the same the actor that is already inside the level sequence and then you also have to provide the name of your variable in my case my float variable in my blueprint is named my BP float variable name so that's the name I'm using right here and as output the function is going to give us the track that is inside the level sequence if it's there if it's not there well we're gonna have to create it one more time so here I'm just going to ask my movie scene to add a new track the class of the track is going to be new movie scene float track obviously the UID of my actor and then we're gonna set the property name and path to assign it with the blueprint variable that we're going to control so my blueprint float variable name same as the name as my variable in blueprint and same thing for the path right here so good we created the track we assigned it to the float variable to control in the blueprint and then we're going to do the same thing for the section so my section right here we're going to do a find or add a section providing it the frame number and a boolean to let us know if we created a new section or not that's going to give us this section and then if that section was newly added we're just going to set the range to infinite once again you don't have to do that you can set the range that you want in my case I'm just stretching it to the infinite it doesn't really matter as long as it covers all the keyframes that are inside it it should work so good we now have the track and the section we have to find the channel now so in the section we can get the channel proxy to get the channel the type of channel is going to be f movie scene float channel there's only one channel inside that track anyway but we have to still provide the index of the channel we're looking for so the index is zero that's going to give you the channel in which we want to add the keyframe and for the float channel it's a little bit different you have three choices to add keyframes you have the add linear key you have the add cubic key and add the constant key in my case I'm going to add a linear key but you can use any of those functions depending on which interpolation you want to use so in my case add the linear key I'm providing it the frame number and also the value I want to assign to my keyframe and once again the value doesn't really matter in this case I just want to make sure that it works so I'm just providing a random value between minus 100 and 100 and that should assign a float value to my keyframe and that's it I'm just going to tell my track and my section to refresh themselves by calling the modify function and that's it for the float variable now the last variable that we're going to do is the enum variable and it's going to be pretty similar one more time so I'm going to scroll all the way down same thing we're going to start by trying to find the track that is inside the level sequence if it's already there the type of track is going to be the new movie scene byte track this time the UID is going to be the same and then the name of my variable in my case it's my BP byte variable name that's the name of my variable in blueprint it has to match so provide the name of your variable in blueprint right here it's going to give you the track if the track doesn't exist we're going to create it obviously so movie scene add a new track the type of track is the new movie scene by track one more time then you provide the UID of your actor and then assign it to your variable that is created in your blueprint so set property name and path the name of your variable right here and right there and that's going to create the track for you once you have the track you have to also create this section so right here I'm just going to do a find or add a section on my track providing it the frame number and a boolean to let us know if the section was newly added and if the section was newly I did I'm just going to set its range to the infinite one more time you don't have to do that that's just what I'm doing to keep it simple and now that we have a track and a section we just need the channel so same thing get channel proxy get channel movie scene byte channel a channel index is gonna be zero one more time that's going to give you the channel and on that channel now you can add a keyframe and we're back to the add keys function so that one takes an array as input so we're going to take the frame number and put it inside an array and same thing for 
for the value. I'm going to generate a random enum value based on the range of the enum I'm going to use in Blueprint. So right now I'm going to select a random value between 0 and 7 because that's the amount of elements that are inside my Blueprint enum that I decided to use and that should add a keyframe for our enum value and that's it. We just have to tell the track and the section to refresh themselves by calling the modify function and that's it now we're done for real we're just gonna tell the user that it worked and it's time to jump in unreal to see if it works and here i am in unreal in a relatively empty level and level sequence which are the two assets that i have right here so in my level i have a blueprint actor which is my cube that i have right here and it's also inside the level sequence we're gonna add keyframes onto that actor that actor already has a few variables that you can see on the right right here it has three variables one boolean one float and one one byte which have the same names as the names that we wrote in C++ two seconds ago. So I have my BP bool variable name, BP float variable name, and my BP byte variable name. So these are the same exact names that we used in the C++. And for those variables to be used in the level sequence, they have to be exposed to cinematics. So let's go take a look inside the cube right here. We can see the three variables on the left right here, the bool, the float, and the byte. And you can see on the right that they are all three instance editable and also exposed to cinematic, which let just control them inside the level sequence so that's how i created my three variables so here they are right here and to be able to add keyframes to those variables i'm just going to use a simple user interface as usual and that one is really really simple the only thing i can control is the frame number where i want to add the keyframes and when i click on add keyframes it's going to call our function which is going to create random keyframes for all the three variables that's how it looks in the blueprint so when i click on the button it's going to call the add bp keyframe function the level sequence is the level sequence i just showed you the actor that is inside my level it's obviously the actor that i just showed you also and as frame number we're going to use the frame that we wrote in the spin box so that's pretty much it now let's go see if it works so here i don't have any keyframes in my level sequence at the moment and if i do add keyframe it's going to add keyframes for all these three variables which are the three variables that we added in the c++ so if i select my actor i can see on the right that the values of my three variables changed because they are now controlled by the level sequence because we are now have tracks for all of those and sections and keyframes so they are now controlling the variables that are on my blueprint and to be sure that it works i'm just going to create a bunch of random keyframes to a bunch of random locations so here 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 and here here we go so now we have a bunch of keyframes and if i scrub in the level sequence we can see that it affects directly the variables that are assigned to my blueprint which means that if i have logic in my blueprint that is using those variables well it's going to use the new variables that are now controlled inside the level sequence and that's it now you know how to add keyframes to blueprint variables variables in the level sequence with C++. So that's going to be it for today's video and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye bye!